All right, I've got one of my stinger jump brakes in here right now, and uh, it's I've been running. I run it through my pole sander. It's got 1,200 scratches on it right now, and what I'm going to do is is I'm going to take and I'm going to use the uh, 1,500 now, and I'm going to wet sand it with 1,500. I mean that's where I need to be right now, and so what I'll do is I'll prep it with the 1,500. soapy water I'm using I mean it's it's the best way to do it I just mix up dove and and a bottle and just throw it in there and it's, it's soapy water it doesn't have any and not adding any oils or anything in it to cause any problems so that's, that's what I do I'll use this 1500 and I've got my machines probably spinning about 15 16 1800 rpms pretty fast What I got to do is I could use that 1500 enough to take down those 1200 scratches. So that's, that's why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it is I'm cutting the, the 1500, the 1200 scratches out of it. Which you can use buffing compounds to do it. They got buffing compounds that will cut the 1200 scratches, but I can use the the paper. It's 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 twice as fast. As you'll notice, I've got the 3000 on here right now, and I'm cleaning up the 1500 with the 3000. And then, of course, when I use my, my I'm going to try a new, a new CSI product here in a second that uh, I just got in and it's supposed to be better polish, blah, 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 but it doesn't have any cutting, it's just a, a, a polish. So it should be actually used at the end. Now I'm going to wipe off all the nasty grit and stuff, which is the fact that it's there. Now this is the CSI that I was talking about. Now this is polish. Polish only enhances what you do. It doesn't uh, doesn't do any cutting. It just polishes and enhances what it's got. But I mean that's what it is. It's just a ceramic deal. Uh, I know we use it use it on other stuff, but I'm just just gonna give it a shot and see see if it makes any difference I just I'm just working 3,000 scratches with it I'm gonna just see if it'll shortcut it I mean that's the uh, that's the whole thing about this is finding a combination that really works and you can see it on the end there on the butt kind of kind of enhanced it a little bit but it's not going to overcome it's not going to overcome those 3,000 scratches I can tell you that right now that's why it looks a little dull and I'm putting enough pressure on it, it's almost stopping the lay. Of course, this is a little dinky, you know, lay. Okay, now I see that that's, you know, it did some good, but it, it served no purpose at this point. Should be something that's done at the very after. I'll, I'll be testing it more later. I just had to see if it was just as good as it is. I also got some mirror glaze coming in that from Meguiar's that will it's supposed to be the next step past what I'm going to do here in a minute with the uh, ultimate compound because I use the ultimate compound Meguiar's right here the key to this is is you get it on there and then you pull on you get it enough that you can feel the heat when you start feeling the heat you're going to be you're going to be actually doing some cutting and you're going to actually be a doing polishing at the same time but this uh, Meguiar's is made to take out impurities, scratches and everything else so it's, it's it's pretty good and there's some others out there that you can do I mean I know some polishes you can spend 60 80 dollars a quart if you want to but I mean I got I got one of those 80 dollar quarts sitting in the back perfected and it's not as good as this Meguiar's right here And if you ever look at the test results on YouTube and stuff like that, they're always trying to compare it to Meguiar's. So maybe there's something is to Meguiar's. I like Meguiar's because it tells you the cutting factor on the front of the bottles, and that makes it pretty handy. I mean, I could go up there and grab one of my diamond cuts, which is a 10, which would remove, you know, a 12, 12, 
1200 scratches and then then come back and then use the one could we cut it with about a number five or six and cut the, those scratches out and then go back and get another one that cuts three and cut those scratches out and then go down to a number one to kind of get it all cleaned out up and that's that's the beauty of the way the Meguiar's has, has got it. It's, it's got the numbers in front. You just do it by the numbers. Now this is using the Meguiar Ultimate Compound on it. Now it looks like it's not doing a whole lot. But like I said, when I when I come back here and wipe it, wipe off the wipe off the, the, you know, the residue, the dry residue. Now, here's what I like to use. This is the Meguiar Glaze, and it's only a one cut. Well, the ultimate compound is probably, a, I'd say, a three cut, and this is probably a one cut. And it does a pretty good job. And you can see it's on the butt section there. You can see how it's beginning to take take a little bit of little bit of shine not a whole lot but it's taking it's taking some and then just use this machine glaze and go from there put enough pressure on it I can feel the heat. When I can feel the heat I know I'm working. This is one of my stinger jump brakes. They're, you know, they're they're a three hundred and seventy five dollar Q, so it's it's not like I spend as much time as I do I do a two or three thousand dollar Q. Jump brake cues don't get any respect anyway. Everybody really bangs them, slaps balls, slap tables, throw them around. They just don't I don't know. They just don't they don't treat them the same as they would at their playing cue. I don't know why. Why jump brakes get abused like they do, but <laughs> they just do. Now I'm wiping off the residues while I'm doing this paper towel, which bounty paper towel is equivalent to about 3,000 grit in case you're wondering. Okay, what about a pad of paper towel? Um, like bounty is about 3,000 grit paper. So if you're cleaning off residue, you're actually buffing it with 3,000 and, and doing it all at the same time. Now I'm fixing to take my uh, buffer and I'm going to put the machine glaze on it, that number one on it, and I'm going to put some on it. That's an orbitable side, side angle, you know, it looks like an angle grinder, but it's not. It's an orbital deal. It's about a $50 item at Amazon. Little deco, deco. And said I take it, spin that on there a little bit and get it slobbered on good. Now I'll turn it on and here we go. You can see how hard I'm pressing on it. I've got it on about not the lowest setting, but about two up two up from the slowest setting is where I run my run it. And I have my other lay running, you know, 12, 1500 RPM.
Now I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to wipe off any residue. You look at the butt cap, that Bacote butt cap, and you can kind of see that it's beginning to shine up a little bit. But it's close. Alright, what I'm going to probably do now, I'm going to take it out, and I've got another buffer that I'm fixing to use on it, but here's kind of how it looks a little bit right there, what I've done. You can see here. Sorry about the shaking, that's because I'm moving my camera over to do it, so I can just do this all at one swoop. That's why you see whatever the time of this video is, you'll see exactly how long it took me to do this from start to finish. Now what that is on the buffing wheels, that's a, a pair of 10 inch, and then it has like a 6 inch in the center, so all I have to do is now I'm going to turn the, i got to turn my power on to it. But what it is, I've got a, I've got a one inch, six inch in the middle between those two tens that gives me a gap that I can actually run this cue in. So if I go in one side with material on it, and I use a sealant, synthetic sealant 2.0 mirror glaze. And it, it does does a pretty good job. I I think I think there's some stuff that's better. I you know I just I've been just trying that recently. I've seen sort of somebody had tried it on the internet, and I thought I'd give it a shot. I'm not crazy about the purple. The purple ends up getting my wheels a little bit on the dark side, but I charge I kind of charge it this way. Now I just take it here, and you can see how I just kind of seesaw it in there in between the two deal. I'll swap to the other side so you can see what I'm doing. See, one side wipes it on, one side wipes it off. I mean, it's... Uh, and I'm pushing pretty hard. That's a 1,750 RPM Coswell buffer. Uh, I bought that one at Grizzly, I guess, 15 years ago or something like that. And I put a little black mark right there on it from that trash can, but you can't hurt it. And so I'm gonna just, just I'm gonna buff it out real quick. It just tells you how much pressure I'm putting on this thing to buff it. This is the way I've been buffing my cues now for about 15 years. Years ago I had a, a rod, a 7 8 rod, and put it through and I had about eight buffing wheels on it and skipped the gap on all of them. That way I had them all and I put it in my lay and I'd spin my lay at about 1,000 RPM and, and do all the cues. But I'm just pointing it out about that six inch down there inside of it. That keeps you from going too far too deep and it'll actually buff on it too. Now on the other end I have a real, real loose furry wheel on it and it really will clean everything off and it'll do a fine little little buff ditty on it. But as you'll look at it here, that looks that looks acceptable. For three hundred seventy five dollar Q that'll that'll kinda work. It's just that maple don't 
you don't have a whole lot to shine and show through on it but that's just plain clear white just clear, clear white maple this is 15 minutes and 34 seconds right now camera and I'm going to take it outside just do it all one time just whatever this thing runs from start to finish including all this will be how long it takes me to do this Maple's so clean and white, it's kind of hard to see anything really super shiny.